Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction. Whether it's World Cup, hockey, football, or basketball, Sports Interaction has you covered. Bet pregame, live and play, or one of our many prep bets. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. She scores! Take a moment to look up at the ceiling. You're about to bust through it. SDPN, the PWHPA and Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Presents Hockey Like You've Never Heard It Before. The Noxie and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Carol Lemard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Welcome back to Noxie and Cax on SDPN. We are in Ottawa this weekend for the Secret Dream Gap Tour and the PWHPA All Star Weekend. We have all the details and we don't want you to miss on them. So before we introduce our very special guests, Cax, let's let everyone know how they can. Tune in or attend the action this weekend. Do you want to start us off with Friday? Absolutely. So we're um, actually having two games on Friday. Uh, first game is at 4.45. It's Adidas versus Scotiabank, and it's going to be in Campville, Ontario. So you can go get your tickets and um, be in the stands for that one game. The next game is at 8 p.m. Uh, it's Sonnet versus Harvey's and it's in Gatineau, Quebec. And uh, if you cannot be there or attend physically, you can also watch the games on cbcsports.ca. And then Saturday, we're sto- so stoked, so stoked. So stoked. <laughs> That's how stoked we are. Let's uh, go. TSN, RDS, ESPN Plus, and then tsn.ca will be streaming and live broadcasting our games 3 o'clock p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Our three o'clock game is Adidas versus Sonnet at the Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa, obviously. And then our second game, not to create tension on the podcast today, but Harvey's versus Scotiabank. Again. So it's going to be a great tilt. Those are our top. Oh, I think actually it's our one three team now. I think. Did, Could be. Did Adidas bump in their way into second place last weekend? I don't know. It's a, it's a fresh know. wound. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, Sunday, we have our skills competition, um, which will be covered live through our social media platforms. But highlights from the skills competition will be aired at our 1230 All-Star Game. It'll be a three-on-three style tournament. And that will be on TSN, RDS, ESPN, and TSN.ca. So for all that information, if you didn't catch it, pwhpa.com. Or dot com, and yeah, you can tune into all the action. And speaking of skills competition and (laughs) all-star game details, as we alluded to, who better to cheer for than our very special guest, Olympic gold medalist, two-time world champion, a stud backstop to Team Scotiabank. She will be in the Save Street competition on Sunday. Welcome to the show, Emron Smashmeyer. Woo! Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm also so stoked for the All Star Game. <laughs> so, so stoked! See, she got it right. So stoked! I think that was like a chirp <laughs> right stoked. there. So stoked! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that won't be the last time I stumble over my words here. But um, so from Bruden, Bruderham, Bruderham, Bruderheim. Oh, Bruder- you practice. I practice. I don't know why I tur- turned German. You should let the French person this. go. <laughs> Mash, can you can you give us there? You go. Bruder, yeah, Bruder which Heim. means brother home in German. I don't speak any German, but that's the translation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it. That's in cute. Alberta, Canada, just in case right. anybody was confused like I was. It's not actually in Germany. Um, no, it's an hour northeast of Edmonton, just to put that on the map. <laughs> so very much in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> very much north. Not that north, but kind of. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, Okay, so why don't you tell us about growing up there? You have quite a large family, um, mm-hmm. you know, playing outdoor puck on the ODR, good farm life. Just tell us a little bit about what it was like to be a kid in Bruderheim. Well, Bruderheim, it's like population. Yeah, good job there with the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like population 1400. I think growing up, it was 1100. And quite honestly, a lot of the people there are probably related to me everyone's there right cousins. Cousins. Everyone's there. right cousins. Cousins. Sign everywhere um 
But I honestly adored growing up in Bruderheim. It was, you know, such a small community feel. And um, quite honestly, the only thing to really do was play hockey. So that's kind of the identity of my family. And I have four siblings. We all played hockey. And my dad actually built an outdoor rink, which is pretty classic, but an outdoor rink um, on our farm. So when we weren't at the rink practicing with our teams, we were at home practicing together. So we spent a lot of time together, um, you know, a lot of smiles, laughs, and also some tears on the ice too as well. So Naturally, um, siblings will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, you get a little competitive and dad expects a lot. It's okay. <laughs> I love yeah. that. So wait, time out. So he built you guys a outdoor rink. Was it like t 12 months a year? Or I was there for the winter only or? They're an hour north of Edmonton. They're, they I can't mean, we be still playing hockey summer. 12 months a year, Cax. <laughs> well, we did play hockey. I'm not saying like outdoor. <laughs> okay, watch this. It was probably still up there to get some shots out there or work on some skills. But mm. I bet okay. you, Anoxia. Don't I'll trip me like that. I think, I think I know the question. So we did actually oh. play hockey like all year round, which is a little bit insane, but that was us. And we had the outdoor rink all year, but we would only use it in the winter when we had ice in. And then my dad also <laughs> built like a shooting shed. Um, in the okay, closet. my bad. So we had another area for where we would do our shooting and stick handling and skills. So yeah, we were a little intense, I must say. Okay, my bad. See, you that's what that I meant. Off. I, take okay, I knew there was like a little <laughs> area where they could still train and do their things because right. you're, you actually, I don't know, Noxie, if you saw that, but was that little shooting area in your homemade farm gym as well, too? Because during COVID, we saw a couple of video on Instagram or vice versa of you training in this, like, it looked like Rocky. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know the movies? Rocky, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, um, the tar yes. and the bars and everything. So, okay. Yeah. So, they had a gym, a rink, a shooting area. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. Really spoiled. We, um, so typically a Quonset like for where tractors are stored and you work on them, but not on our farm. It's the <laughs> Quonset's where, where we play hockey and do anything to do with training. Um, so, yes, Cax, you're right. We did. We have, well, we still do. We have a gym out in the corner of the Quonset. There's a shooting area. There's still like spray paint on the cement for like fast feet drills and, <laughs> and there's even like a tree right outside the quonset that we had to cut down because one of our stations for training was like cross checking the tree, which is a little bit insane too, but <laughs> we cross checked it so much that we killed it. So <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. Like, you knew the Mash my family, like we're not that aggressive, so it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I went to school with Brett and she's just like a sweetheart, like the sweetest. And then I met Bronson, doesn't seem like a very aggressive guy or like whatever. <laughs> so, so okay. Frustrations out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. So four siblings. Rocking cash. It's the other two then. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So just for everyone, four siblings, Brittany is the oldest, Bronson, mm -hmm. Brock, you, and Cash. All right. And how, how point. many of you guys names. ended up as goalies? Just me. Well, it's actually funny because we all but one and your dad four words, and then I oh. switched to goalie, and everyone else switched to D. So I don't know how that happened, but we all oh, changed they wanted identities. to protect the goalie. That's what it is. Yeah, they wanted to protect the little about. goalie, <laughs> little sister move here. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. awesome! I'm picturing. Oh um, I don't know if you guys have seen it on Instagram. But there's this guy that does like these farm workouts and all of the like machines and stuff that he's built on his farm are like <laughs> out of logs. Like this is what I'm picturing your family <laughs> like, oh, time to go bail some hay and caber toss this log for our work. <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing like that, but let me have my imagination. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's more fun to think of it that way. I mean, yeah, there were some moments of that. It's maybe a little bit better now, but growing up, yeah, we did some interesting things. I mean, the, the crash check station is my favorite for sure. Yeah, there's definitely more, but that's all I'm sharing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I love it. let's get into your playing career a little bit then. Obviously, like your family had a huge impact on you becoming a goalie. Um, before we get to your ice, your hockey, before you, know, you kind of decide to go to Harvard, You're on Team Scotiabank. Scotiabank's slogan is, you're richer than you think. And we want to know, if you want a million dollars tomorrow, what are you going to do with it? Hmm. I think that, I mean, just to stay on like the family topic, I would love to book like a two-week vacation with 
all of my siblings, family, significant others, like everyone, cousins, like bring everyone along and let's just have so much fun together. Because I feel like our lives are just so busy these days that it's so hard to get together other than maybe Christmas, but still not everyone's usually able to come. So, um, I mean, that was maybe not the answer you wanted, but since we no, were on the family topic, I, I think like that would be like such a good time to do that. I think you should buy your dad a new tree, but that's <laughs> yeah. beside the point. <laughs> Plant a couple trees for dad. Yeah. That's even yeah. more for mom because I think dad made us do that. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't no, think of her. Jesus. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I feel like most of the like guests we have on the show, Cax, like most people, that's a good go-to answer. It's just like time with your family is like such a yeah. hard thing to come by when you guys are living the lifestyles that you do and have so much going on. And like you say with your your siblings too, I'm sure they're very busy people. So I love the I love the family vacay. That's a great answer. So it's a good one. Tell us then a little bit on the family topic, what it was like growing up playing hockey. I can't imagine there's a ton of girls hockey in Brewerheim. Bruderheim. Bruder. There we go. By the end of this there. episode, we'll I'm going to get yeah. that. <laughs> Bruderheim. <laughs> Say it fast. Um, yeah. So there, there wasn't really a lot of opportunity for female hockey players. You know, I grew up in a small town, but then I also didn't even, I grew up playing for a couple of years in Bruderheim. That's where my career started. But then a career, it sounds super official, but that's where I started playing <laughs> hockey. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, my family kind of went to Fort Saskatchewan, which is a city about 25 minutes from us to play. Just the opportunity there was better. And um, again, there wasn't a lot, um, you know, to look forward to, as, like for female hockey there, just based off of numbers of females playing and the um, competitiveness. So yeah, I stayed playing guys hockey kind of all the way through and um obviously spent a lot of time with my siblings on the ice as well. But as a goalie, kind of had my own um, training regimen and I was pretty intense from a young age. So I um, I got a goalie coach when I was like eight years old. Um, and I still actually work with him today when I when I go back home. So Wow. Okay. I have a question on that. Do Are all your siblings exactly like that? Like, like you are like super, you know, routine. Everything needs to... You have you have one mindset and then it just needs to happen. Like, you know, you're, you're, I don't know, you're putting all efforts in there or super regimen, like eight years old, I'm on the ice, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, like <laughs> yeah, going about I, it or I think is this like from like, mom and dad type of thing? That's my question, basically. Yeah, I definitely stem, stem from mom and dad. Um, I would say like in terms of hockey, like the four older, um, like from me up, we were all very, very like, passionate about hockey we wanted to be on the ice all the yeah. time um and really cared about our craft my little brother i think honestly he played because we all played but he <laughs> enjoyed going out there and just like hitting he just wanted to do like open ice hits like that's all he cared about <laughs> Love you know that. What? and that's great for him um but i'm glad at, at some point he i think it was like grade 11 or 12 he said i want to be a pilot and kind of took on his own path, which I can't imagine would be easy in a, a family like ours. Um, because, you know, it, the expectation is you play hockey. That's just kind of what it was growing up. And yeah. we were so pumped for him that that was what his passion was. And he still played a little bit longer for fun to be around friends. But um, he's kind of the one that went off into aviation. And I mean, in in that sense, like for, for aviation, like he's definitely very focused and driven in that. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a pilot now or about to That's be. Yes, so is. that is so cool. Wow. Okay. That was a, I just wanted to see if it was a trait in the family, you know, some <laughs> kind of genes you get. From top down, like, yeah, for as sure. Goalies, yeah, as goalies, like we are always like a little bit more like next level. So mm -hmm. I wanted to know, because you said you started training with your goalie coach when you were eight. That is something like I just personally never did. Like it, it wasn't available to me, but I feel like nowadays it's much more common for kids to be seeking out like pos position specific coaching from a young age. Did you ever feel like you burnt out? Um, I don't think so, which is surprising. I, I think as I kind of got older and learned my body and learned what I needed, I realized that I didn't need to be on the ice all year round. But quite honestly, mm -hmm. that took for me until like, probably halfway through college that I was like, I need to also take time away from the rink. But when mm -hmm. I was growing up, we were, we were always on the ice and we enjoyed doing that. Um, so to switch that mentality was really difficult for me because I thought more is more is more. And then at some point I, I said, I, I want to 
be so excited to go on the ice and to train mm-hmm. and to be around my teammates and friends, not, you know, think of hockey as a job. And of course, there's days that are more difficult than others, but I wanted to be excited every time I was going to the rink. So yes, as I've gotten older, I've definitely learned kind of what my limits and boundaries are. And, and when it's off time, it's off time and it's away from the rink for sure. Yeah. That's like I, I think that's such an important message because like the time especially in your off season to take a a bit of a step away from the rink, like and playing road hockey or like getting your shots in, like it's, it is different, but I think it's important for young athletes like to have that balance and have like other sports that they play or other things that, so that when you come back to the rink, you know, like, like you're saying, Mash, like you're excited, like you're excited to be back on the ice. Right. I think so many times, like we just see these kids, like they're so hockey focused. And I just think, Oh my gosh, like, (laughs) I got so scared, I almost, but I, I was just going to go ahead. Oh, sorry, Cax. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> like even when asked. I was explaining kind of my childhood, I just, I, I obviously like that was an awesome lifestyle for me and my family. And, but I also know now how intense kids are too. And like you were saying, Noxie, it's, it's actually healthy to have time away from the rink. So I'm not saying that one way is better than the other. No. <laughs> like it's kind of individual for, you know, everyone, but if I were to look back, there's definitely times I could have taken some time away from the rink. And, um, you know, even now I think like in the future, if I have children, will I have them on the ice all year round? Probably not. Now that with the information that we know and the, you know, I'll probably encourage them to play other sports and, you know, do other activities and, um, kind of be well-rounded athletes in a different sense. Um, but still, yeah, Yeah. there's, you have, it's also different when you're, yeah, like you're growing up on the farm and I, right. I can't I was, imagine there's a ton of stuff to do. <laughs> like, I was just going to say too, and on on top of it, like the whole time you've been talking about this and how you've been careful about that, you've been mentioning how much you've loved it and love mm-hmm. to be on the ice and we love right. to be on the ice together and we've loved to. So it wasn't like your dad pressured you to be on the ice or parents were pressuring kids to be on the ice. It mm-hmm. was like you and your fam and having and enjoying the time that you were spending on the ice. Like at, at the end of the day, I think that the balance needs to be there if you start to not love it anymore then maybe step away but if you keep yeah. i don't know if you're still enjoying it as much as you as you did and maybe you were hyper and you needed that ice yeah. time back <laughs> then or whatever it is you know i think that that the end of the at the end of the day as long as like you're enjoying and you're still loving and it's not like a chore to get to the rink or to yeah. get on yes. the ice with others yeah it's so I think true that's I, key. I, I remember my dad always saying like if you don't enjoy it anymore if you don't love it let us know And that was always like, you are not stuck in playing hockey because you're in a hockey family. Like, you know, if you're not enjoying it, then find something, we'll find something else that you're passionate about. And I always remembered like, you know, in the tougher days, you're like, do I really want to do this? But then you go back to the (laughs) ring and you're like, yeah, I do love hockey. (laughs) So (laughs) I think just like him even saying that and my parents always being like, no, this is not your thing. Like, that's okay. But we always wanted to go to the ring. So yeah. Super supportive. Yeah, I was, I definitely wasn't trying to challenge you on that. I just think it's a really interesting, <laughs> like, topic for young athletes these days because there's right. so much sport specific training available now. Um, but obviously, yeah, like you said, like your younger brother becoming a pilot, finding something that he's truly passionate mm-hmm. about. Like, you just got to make sure you're loving what you're doing, right? It sounds so cliche and corny or whatever, but like, if you love showing up to the rink, like, keep doing it. So, so let's true. move into your career <laughs> at Harvard. Or how your career continued since we, you know, it started back home. Um, Were you there from 2012 to 2016? Did I get those dates right? Yeah, that's right. So 12 to 16. And what did you study at Harvard? I took sociology and economics. Good social girl. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) She goes, what did you study? And I'm like, oh God, I can't remember. (laughs) Don't know. I don't think I know. (laughs) Maybe we've never talked about that. So Shanika, okay, I like it. I love it. So, okay, my question is, between Legally Blonde, Old School, and Goodwill Hunting, or a movie of your choice, which of these three movies do you think would best depict your experience of Harvard University? Uh, definitely Legally Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're blonde and you went there? Like. I don't know. I just, that movie is so funny. And I just like love how badass she is. But also at the same time, like how girly and feminine she is. Like, I feel like I've always like had that dichotomy of like 
Emirates, the hockey player, like tough, this and that. But then I like off the ice, like I like like to dress up. I like to do my hair and makeup. So I don't know, legally blonde. I love that. <laughs> That's, That's a awesome. good description too. Three Elle very Woods. different movie. It's yeah. such a great movie. Elle though. Woods. Yeah. <laughs> so Elle Woods and Emirates Vashmar studying at Elle. Harvard together. <laughs> New nickname. We got it. <laughs> um, so maybe tell us a little bit about campus life at Harvard because. I kind of like was telling Cax this story before we recorded, but I went down there one time to meet up with Christina Kessler, uh, who is a former um, Toronto Furies goalie. And she went to Harvard and like we went down, like went to a bar in Boston, like had a bunch of friends, like kind of come meet us there, like come and go. And then we went back to campus and I found out that there was free keg beer on campus. And I was so pissed because I just dropped like three bills on <laughs> beers, like throughout the day of people coming and going. And she's like, oh, yeah, like on Thursdays, they have free beer in the quads to get people out of their dorm rooms and like out of the library because everyone just is so stressed from studying. So I'm curious to know, like, <laughs> was that a one time experience just when I was there? Or is this like, <laughs> give us a, give us an idea of what campus life is like at Harvard. I would love to talk to Kess and like clarify a little bit because I don't think we ever had that experience of having like free beer in the quads or like, yeah, it will say in the quads. But when you go out on campus, there's, I don't know how it is now, but at the time we had these finals clubs and you would go and you wouldn't have to pay for any alcohol. And yeah, basically, uh, I think through my four years, I I don't know if I really ever pulled out my credit card. (laughs) I went to the wrong school. Yeah, little did you know, Harvard. Harvard. (laughs) Harvard's the party school, I guess. The finals club. I don't know. Wait, were they finals party or finals? What do you just in? Oh yeah, I didn't hear right. Sorry, it's called. They're called the finals clubs, but. It's all year round. It's not just during finals. <laughs> there were specific things that happened during finals, but you know, Harvard has a lot of weird traditions. So, so this is like for like Frozen Four finals kind of thing, or like what what's finals? Finals like, like exams. Oh, yeah, finals like exams, like in exam um, Nazi <laughs> exams. <laughs> like, <laughs> school, Harvard, know, you know, right? like get it together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking like, well, there's so many sports. There's got to be a final probably every week. Like, oh, there's a swimming final this week, so we open the bar, and there's a, a <laughs> badminton <laughs> final this week. We just like uh, maybe that's why it stayed open. They each <laughs> each board have yeah, a season I, and they compete in those <laughs> time Nazi, but no, that was related to school probably. Yeah, I don't know the origin of the finals club. Like, I don't know why it's called that, but it might be because of like probably during finals week just to get people like again like out of their dorms and less stress there's probably something going on in these socialize clubs. a little we do yeah. like a well i won't say i ever participated in it but there was a like a naked mile that you would do around the quad before um each final exam period so that was like also another way to get people out and <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> yeah. see uh, mine we had a a naked lap like that that was done at St. Lawrence, but it's it's done the you know the first year who usually show up like a week prior to mm-hmm. everyone else on campus, and then their first lecture from the pe- president is with a candle and, around the quad, and then the seniors usually run through. <laughs> 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 they ran through and then <laughs> literally I remember being like a freshman holding my candle and I'm just like what is happening and you can hear them you're like someone is coming and they're just running through some people are, were biking some people like running flags everything so I was like funny. wow this is the school I chose that I am so happy to be awesome. here the you naked thing my, is a real thing my sister has told me about that because my sister also went to SLU and played with Cax yeah. back when and um, I believe my Brit. mom was like still around moving in my sister <laughs> when that happened so it's been talked about in my family <laughs> your mom's just like oh my goodness where did we just leave our daughter like yeah. it's like the best <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> It's a good tradition. Talking yeah. about tradition here. We're good. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. Wow. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. I mean, I would say that's closer to old school, but legally blonde. I was going to say, like, I think, I think the movie yeah. you should have chosen. Yeah. Old school should have been there. I, I didn't say I participated. It's true. I, I never, did fair. I disclose that? Fair, fair enough. No, that's You're off rare. the hook on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody else's experience was old school. Maybe um, someone else. Right. <laughs> Maybe Kessler's, so not me. Yeah. 
<laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Let's toss oh the other goalie gosh. on there to bus. It's yeah. perfect, yeah. you guys. Yeah, it's, I love it. It's easy to toss goalies under the bus. It's what we do. <laughs> right. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about like your hockey at Harvard then. Yeah. <laughs> switch obviously, gear. <laughs> obviously yeah. the very serious reason why we're here. Um, just talk us through kind of your four years, you know, environment of your team, success of your team. You know, kind of walk us through those four years at Harvard. Coach Stone, ring it. Yeah, Coach Stone. Um, yeah, so my four years, there's kind of a range like of, I would say like I had like with my team a couple of years where we were very strong. So my freshman year and my, my, uh, oh my God, I just forgot junior. I was going to say Sophomore. third year. I've been in oh, Canada junior. too long now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, junior? Junior. Uh, so those two years were my, you know, the stronger of the two years. And then I kind of had two years, sophomore and my senior years, we weren't as strong. And I think as a goalie, like those years are actually what developed me the most is because I, I had a lot of shots against and I was able to be the one to kind of steal games when, you know, when needed. Um, but I absolutely loved my experience with Harvard hockey, just like the traditions that our team had as soon as I got to the school. I think like any, um, you know, female hockey player going to college, um, joining a team, there's just like so much to learn when you come in so many traditions, you get welcome in with open arms. Um, and that was definitely my experience with Harvard. And I've gotten to, you know, create friendships that will last a lifetime from that school. And that's pretty special. So I would say I like, I loved my experience with Harvard. Um, I wish I could go back quite honestly and play another four <laughs> years. Do, but, don't we? You know, we all know that goes super quick. <laughs> those years way too fast yeah no that's good harvard was always a powerhouse though i know you're saying you were like a little not as strong or whatever but yeah harvard was always <laughs> tough to play against fast they brought it every game and then they always had a goalie that could do something or stop everything right and kessler at the is, time when i yeah, played and then yeah it's funny you say that because i'm game. like we actually made like top eight through it in my four years but it's all relative, right? You're, when you have a strong team, you're you're like, when you don't make <laughs> Frozen Four, you know, yeah, you we, have yeah. high expectations. So um, I think that's just kind of what, what it was with Harvard Hockey. We were expected to be, you know, in that top group. And when we weren't there, it wasn't enough, yeah. right? So yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. She held you guys to, well, it was a high standards and then just pushed you guys as players too. Um, I think Coach Stone, you know not has that reputation but has a way to get the best out of her players and um that's why she's been there forever and that's why she's had such a successful career too so that's totally. uh, she's she's that coach you'd never want to disappoint because <laughs> you know you respect her so much and she has so much respect for her players and has such high expectations but it's like it's like your parents you know you just don't want to see them disappointed it's okay if they're yeah. mad but it's when they're disappointed that's when <laughs> yeah. it doesn't feel yeah, good yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's that that's actually really interesting. Yeah. Cause like you talk about like trying to motivate athletes and like, I think the respect piece is like, so like pivotal to like how a team responds to a coach and not that like they disrespect the coach, but if you feel like almost accountable to them, then it yeah. it's like a really unifying thing on a team. Like, but it's a, it's a really hard thing to like bring <laughs> yeah. into a culture. Like, Oh, you're just like, respect me. I'm your coach. Well, yeah, obviously that's every coach's dream, but it doesn't right. come that easy. So impressive that she's been able to hold that kind of standard for as many years as she has and, and continues to do. Um, yeah. So then in, in your junior year, junior year, third year, you got it. I think, yeah, I got it. See, I, I only know can, so I only know one, two, three. It's very simple. <laughs> in your junior year, you were drafted to the Boston blades in the then NWHL. And I'm curious how this draft happened because I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but this was a year where like the NW was like drafting players seemingly without like communicating to them. And it was mm -hmm. weird because we played in the CW and we're just like, Oh my gosh, are all these girls going to go play in that? Like it was like everybody who was like a top, I don't know, I'll say a hundred players, top 50 players maybe was drafted in that year. Was drafted and we're like, Holy shit, nobody's coming to the CW. Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> so maybe just talk about like what that, you know, potentially you wanted to stay in Boston or you didn't know about it or you did know about it. I'm just curious to know how that whole draft happened and how mm -hmm. it sat with you and yeah, not to put yeah. you on the spot or anything. I'm just curious. <laughs> no, it, it was a while ago now. So I'm just trying to think of exactly what, what happened, but I, I think you're right. Noxie, like the, the draft happened and I, 
I didn't really know much about the NW. I had heard kind of like rumors and there was buzz about it. Um, but then all of a sudden I was drafted to the Boston Pride. And I was like, obviously you're in college. It sounds awesome that you're getting drafted and, you know, one of the first two rounds and um, it sounds great, but I didn't really know what that meant or what the league would be like. And there did was they, so many question marks. Did they talk to you? Like, did they like say, hey, we're going to draft you? Like, no, no. Okay, I think so I, it was I, like pure honestly, surprise. I think, the- I, yeah, I think I saw it on like Twitter, or maybe Instagram at the time. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of how I was informed. And yeah, I didn't really know much about it. And at that time, I think I feel like in college, it's there's almost a disconnect. And it's maybe a little mm-hmm. bit different now because, you know, we are, you know, promoting the PW, there is a PHF, there's a little bit more like knowledge on, and it's still con- very confusing, you know, quite yeah. frankly, it's very <laughs> confusing, but there is more information on kind of what's going on if you actually want to dig into it and, and figure that out. But at the time, I didn't really know what, like, what, what were my options going to be after graduation? Yeah. It was almost like I was just living in that moment. And then I would figure out when I graduated what I was mm-hmm. going to do, but I I obviously knew like the CW, I knew players, a ton of players that played in the CWHL. Um, my sister had previously played in the CWHL. You know, that was primarily a Canadian league. So I knew that that was very comfortable for me. And also I being in Boston for a few years, I wanted to go back to kind of my home province and be closer to my family as well. So I ended up playing in the CW for the Inferno for that next, well, I guess the season after my senior year. That's yeah. right. The, the, I, I think that you kind of hit the... Sorry, Cax. I, I was going to hit go. the same point, I think, that you're okay, about to you hit. Go. So go for no, it. you go. No, you go. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> okay. I was... Maybe it's not the same point, but you hit one little thing there that, you know, players at your... Well, at the time, um, didn't really know while they were in college, like, what their options were after. I And even really... I don't know if it was a th- um, really a thing when you graduated, but around my era um it was like also if you weren't like necessarily on the programs or on like the national programs uh keep like playing wasn't necessarily like the the Mm. most like i don't know like not accepted but kind of like why do you keep playing you should go get a job or you know those type of question but on top of it too we didn't really have any information then you know the end up was created and then there was a new option basically all the u.s girls went and then remove themselves from it later on and after a few years but no one are like no one's really good at like pointing out what the options are where you should be going mm-hmm. here are like the people you should be talking to here are the you know the maybe the timeline that you should be thinking about too mm. within like your graduation and stuff like that's definitely a thing that we will need to be better or help doing for the the future basically after graduating and everything because i think it's always been lacking and it's yeah you know you found out on instagram it's not necessarily like bad on them or anything i'm just saying like that was never you know a a thing and even the drafts on our side moxie in the c-dub oh you know choose your city (laughs) (laughs) choose your city and like one or two or three and then you know you get drafted in round whatever and uh, same thing you probably got drafted emirates when you graduated officially when you joined the the inferno i I think Mm -hmm. probably first round if i'm I'm not mistaken but but like yeah it's like like it was kind of like i remember the year that poo like was in the draft and like (laughs) Branton had the first pick, so she and she, wasn't she made a trade. Branton, so, but like, she had going like, <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. But the, the whole deal was like we made a we made a trade, but then you didn't end up getting anything really out of this well, trade. No, no, this one was uh, we ended up drafting Sarah Edney first overall, who's oh, also okay. a Harvard grad. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's right. That's a fun connection, and she's there a fantastic. Is. Like she was a fantastic defenseman. Like, oh yeah, she was a national team player. So like, yeah. it was still a good pull for us, but like. Who is clearly the number one? Like it wasn't like Crosby's in the draft. Like it wasn't like the yeah. NHL draft. She's going anywhere, right? So yeah. that's yeah. what we're you yeah. know going well, it, towards. It's, but it's so confusing, right? Like you see the drafts happening, and it looks super official. It's you know, it's what a professional league would have. But then, like, yeah. kind of, you peel back the layers, and it's like it's just kind of a formality, right? It's, yeah, it's not yes. really. There's no. So it's that's why again, it's a little bit confusing because we're trying to move to the professional, you know, professional league and have everything like all encompassing, but it's kind of like the chicken or the egg, like what kind of comes first. Like you need to establish that in order to be able to have 
you know, yeah. a draft where, you know, you can only really draft players if you're going to be paying them to relocate. And play. exactly, you can't really, 100%. you know, have someone pick up their whole lives and leave when, you know. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. And that's, that's why make. it was yeah. done. Right. That's why it was done the way it was done before, too. Like I said, yeah. like nothing to blame on the C dub or the end up at the no. time. Like, you know, it's just, it was that's kind of like the reality. The, no, oh, yeah. this is we're gonna try to we're gonna draft her. We're not gonna talk to her, but hopefully she'll come. <laughs> and then on the other side it's like choose your city and you'll be drafted by that city. Like it's yeah, there's no it's, like good or bad either. Like it's just meh. Like you said, a formality. And so that's uh and the point was just like not only do you not know really how the draft is being done or anything, but you don't have any information entering mm-hmm. this draft at the time. So like mm-hmm. moving forward, we definitely need to, you know, uh educate a lot more our graduates and uh, it's it's also super hard right because like i know that like we present to like graduating seniors and i i believe the phf does as well uh we being the pwhpa now but like when you're in that university bubble you also are like ah, whatever i'll deal with this like <laughs> right. after graduation like you're kind of like yeah obviously i want to play somewhere but like you're not it's a lot of work. And like, to your point, Mash, like you said it, like it's confusing. Like you're like closing a chapter, a huge chapter in your life of playing four years of NCAA or U sport Mm -hmm. hockey. And you're kind of feeling like, Oh, like you, you you feel like a little, not deflated, but you're just like, you're sad. You're sad that Mm -hmm. that part of your career is done. And you like, don't really have the energy to like figure out the so-called politics of like pro women's hockey right now. So Mm -hmm. to Cax's point, like definitely an area of opportunity, but like it's, it's hard to it's a hard to reach audience. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll work on that though. <laughs> like we can we can always we can always there's room for improvement. So you go to Calgary, uh, you're playing for the Inferno. You guys make it to the Clarkson Cup Finals, um, and then 2018 uh, is the centralization year, mm-hmm. and. I hope it's not too fresh to talk about, but you were released from that centralization roster, which uh, you know we can all empathize with how devastating that would have been at the time. And you end up moving to Montreal. So why don't you talk us through a little bit of that time period and then kind of like how your year rolled out after that, like who are key players in the decision to, to go to Montreal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not super, super fresh anymore. I I can (laughs) talk about it now without crying, which is a really good (laughs) step. Right. (laughs) Um, no, it was uh, it was a really challenging time um, in my life and in my hockey career. You know, I've had up to that point, quite honestly, I didn't have a lot of adversity with my career. It was kind of pretty smooth sailing all the way through college. Um, and naturally, in my head, the next step was, you know, making the Olympic team. At that point, I had been on the team and made every roster with the national team from 2014 until the Olympic year. So... No you know, reason to think just, that you're not going to make it, really. Right, right. <laughs> Naturally, you kind of just you would think that that would be the kind of, you know, the next step. And, uh, you know, when you're so close to reaching your goal and then it's like right there, you can almost grab it and then it's just ripped away. It it was a tough one to swallow for sure. Um, and I had to kind of take, you know, step back and think, do I love playing? You know, I had all these questions. Yeah. Like, do I really want to go to the rink anymore? Is this my goal? Because, you know, the Olympics would come around and, you know, four more years from then. And that's pretty daunting to think about in that moment for sure. And I actually was five years because it was the start of centralization. So I would have to wait five years to possibly get my chance of achieving my goal again. And so I had to really reflect, why am I playing hockey? Am I doing it just for that? Or am I doing it because I still love it for myself, my family, my team? Like, what is it? Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I won't say it was easy to kind of figure out where I felt and where I stood with hockey because Um, at that time, I really hated going to the rink. And that was the first time I'd ever felt that. So I'm sure everyone can relate on their own scale and, uh, you know, getting cut from a team or hockey's not going well. You know, you have those emotions and those thoughts. But so I reflected and I remember talking to Charlie Labonte and she was like, you know what, I'm retiring uh, from from playing and there's a spot open in Montreal for you to go grab and play, play out there. And I was like, I don't want to move. Like I just moved, I graduated college. I've been in Calgary for a year. She's like, well, if I were you, I would get as far away from Calgary as possible (laughs) because that's where the centralization team was going to be, you know, based out of leading up to the Olympics. And you would be practicing 
right next to them every single day. And she said that and I was like, oh my gosh, she's right. Like that would be miserable. So in that, you know, that moment I said, I'm going to call up the Montreal GM, figure out how to make this work. And I'm going to kind of uproot myself and go and live in Montreal. At the time, I knew Sarah Laforte in Montreal. And Cax, I, I knew you from, you played with my sister. I yeah, knew who you were. It. We chatted a couple times. But other than that, I had no real connection in Montreal. But I thought this would be a good way for me to kind of distance myself from that world and find the love for the game again. And I am so glad I did that because... When I got to Montreal, I had such a good team. Honestly, Tex, I know you could speak to it too, but we had so much fun that season. And it was like a little bit college, a little bit minor hockey. Like we just kind of were in our world and we had so much fun together on road trips, just playing and um, even on the ice. Like I, I, it took me a bit. I kept saying, you know, I don't enjoy playing, but why am I on the ice? I'm playing for my teammates. I'm playing for these girls. And that's kind of how I started thinking about it. I was playing for them. And then eventually it kind of translated back over to like, I love the game. I'm also playing for myself and I'm not playing to make team Canada. I'm just doing mm -hmm. it because I love it. And so that was really the spark I needed was to, to move. And I'm so glad Charlie talked to me and <laughs> kind of convinced me to do it because I feel like after that point, like I've had a, a definitely a different mindset going forward into the, the next quad leading into the next Olympics. And of course, there was some healing that had to be ha like done and probably still needs to, you know, some of those things kind of stick with you for a while. Um, but yeah, I feel like just my mindset totally shifted after that, that change. So that's so cool. And like, I love Charlie, like, like, I played against her all through college. But that is, that's like such like a classy thing for her to reach out and just like give you mm -hmm. that mentorship. Like as somebody who's been there and like in the program and then in Montreal, like what, a, what an incredible thing, like what an incredible right. gift for her to give to you. Just like a little bit of advice. Right. You and know like, what? And she's done it a couple times now too. Like I had a, a really cool experience with her. My, so it would have been my second world championship um, in 2016 Kamloops <laughs> and her, it was uh, Charlie, myself and Howie. So the three of us were at Worlds and um, how it was kind of lining up, Charlie was supposed to be the one playing, you know, the big games. I would have been the ones kind of like supporting, but playing some of the games in the tournament. And then Howie was the designated, you know, supporting goalie. And and so when it came to it, Charlie played the semifinal. And typically at that point, it was always, if you played the semis, you would play the final. And things didn't quite go exactly as planned that game. We still won. Honestly, Charlie still played good, but Hockey Canada has high expectations. And they said, you know, we're going to go with MASH for the final. And I, I remember being like, holy crap, like, <laughs> how did this just happen? I went from like, this is my second year on the team. I feel like it usually takes, it seems like a decade to get your first gold medal game. So I'm like, here I am. I get to, to play for Team Canada in the gold medal game in Canada against the Americans tomorrow. Like, what is going on? Oh my God. But I remember one of my first thoughts was, Oh, Charlie's going to hate me. Like this is, this is her spot. This is where she is, you know, she is meant to play here. And, and she up until that point didn't really get a lot of glory for, you know, the goalie that she was. So yeah. in my head, I was like, I'm taking this from her and that's not okay. Like as a young goalie, that's what I felt. And I actually got a note. I was roommates with Howie actually. And I got a note under my door that night and it was from Charlie and Howie and I were jumping around. We were very childish, I guess at the time, but <laughs> we were so excited because Charlie sent a note and I open it and it's, it's her saying tomorrow, the best goalie is playing and that's you. I told basically hockey Canada, if I'm coming back and playing, I want the best goalie to play. And that's what they're doing tomorrow. And, and wow. she said, your biggest supporter will be number 32 on the bench. And I, I started t like crying. Cause I was like, I want to cry is, now. We're all like, getting emotional no, it here. Is, it is so cute. <laughs> like it, I couldn't believe that she would have given me a note like that. It was a full, like full page. And it meant so much because it meant that I could finally just go out there and play and not worry about that. The, like the politics just, you know, I earn this, yeah. I can play. And she, she was your partner that. there. She was yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I, I like that meant so much because that was probably like crazily enough. That was my biggest worry. It wasn't about playing them. It was about, you know, kind of 
yeah, rattling her cage and not and taking her position. So mm-hmm. yeah, wow, that's a really cool, yeah, really cool story. That is, yeah. No, I'm sorry, Charlie, like... if you hear this and I just exposed you. <laughs> sorry, Charlie, but we're no, all she would love it. Yeah. yeah, giant heart. She, uh, she's always been like that too. Like that's yeah. uh, super thoughtful. What a, what a class yeah. act. Yeah, I just love it. Act. She it, it, and to your point, like the. Well, that changed probably. Okay. So we were talking about mindset, you changing, you coming back, Charlie, you know, being there, not being there. Like, Noxie, you, you probably didn't know any of this, but basically, Charlie called her, whatever this happened. She's moving across the country. And then Charlie calls me and goes, We're having dinner on Thursday and you need to be there. And I was like, Okay, who? She's like, Emerson Smashmeyer is coming and she needs to meet some people from the team. And I was like, Okay, but I I don't know her and she's she's 24 like what like <laughs> what do you mean like uh, like there's other people that are younger than me that can like interact with whatever and she's like no no come like it'll be fun we'll like just get her to like connect with a few people and at dinner like it was like the three of us kept talking like we knew each other like best friends whatever it was but Charlie set it up so that you am would feel like super comfortable as soon as you landed well actually drove and parked your car in Montreal, (laughs) right? With your mom, like, but you felt like you could actually feel at home and in the new home with like some different people, probably that just brought a different, um, I guess, view on life at the time Mm -hmm. too, right? So Mm -hmm. you were always maybe around like a lot of Hockey Canada people, a lot of Team USA people at Harvard and stuff like that. And, And that year you're saying like you played for your teammates, but those teammates were also the girls that, they weren't on those, you know, they weren't centralized. Right. They weren't like, we had a mix of like, not the misfit, but the fun ones. <laughs> like, no, you know, that like, <laughs> yeah. like you know, it, you know what I mean by that? 100%. Like, it's just like the team yeah. that just cares to be here in the moment to play for the Montreal team. Yes. And that's the only thing we really, and- truly value at the time. And I think that gave that team, you gave us hope, obviously joining the team, but at the same time, it gave it a little bit more of a, a different view on what hockey was all about. Like it was mm-hmm. the C dub was our little, you know, Team Canada to you know, Olympic type of like moment and and vice well, versa. And that team itself was was fun. And I think like, okay, this is something that is like hard to describe to like people that aren't <laughs> in women's hockey. Because like, yeah, obviously the Olympians like have the clout. Emerson Smashmar, of course, an Olympic, an Olympic athlete now. So like you're an Olympian, you'll always be an Olympian. Yeah. Like you hit that goal in 2022. Um, so you are kind of the upper class now, but they always see like women's hockey is like, Oh, this is the Olympians and then the rest. Mm-hmm. Like what they don't understand is that a lot of times on the teams, it's the like the rest, as we call them, that like bring a lot of character and a lot of like, care and compassion and like it they're like the the heartbeat of these teams because they literally are just playing because they love the game still right Mm -hmm. and not that the olympians don't i'm not i'm not saying that but at a certain level like what we've been talking about all episode is like hockey is your job like you're an olympic athlete hockey is your job you have to be on your game you know all the time training eating sleeping like it's your profession and it should be but until we like really professionalize women ho- women's hockey and it's everybody's profession in the time being it's often the non-olympics non-olympic players who like bring that culture mm-hmm. to the team and and to that point before you go uh mash it's like um the players like they they bring the character and everything that you're saying but they bring also the balance at times yeah. that I'm not saying Olympians do not have a it's balanced true. life. It's I don't true. say that at all. Like, please don't quote me on this, but it's like a little bit of a, we're going to work our hardest. We're going to crush the gym when we can go. Then we're we're going to work party. because we do work, but we do need to have fun <laughs> and be there for our teammates too. Right. We like, it's just like, it's a, it's a, it's a, you bring back the college vibe mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. a pro team if that makes sense like you care for the people not that you guys don't care oh my god i keep saying this but it's just no, like you don't need to no no, no. you know what i mean like and it's just these little moments like so the whole 2018 year like i feel like this is kind of like i'm extrapolating yeah. here but this is kind of like what you got from that year was like okay i need to reset like refine the love for the game and like you end up four years later achieving that goal yeah. and it's mm-hmm. like you do you feel like you're a more balanced athlete now versus 
you know, going into that 2018 year? Yeah, I have so many points I want to touch on. Oh my God. That's a um, good question. You got to write them down. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I should have been writing down my notes. It's, it's so true. Like, I feel like that season was, um, I guess the closest I felt to being like the rest of, you know, the, the rest of the girls, like we're calling them. And, um, quite honestly, it like really opened my eyes and I am inspired by like that group of girls who like you too work all day and go to play at night. And like, for me, like my job is showing up at the rink training and like, that's my job. That's what I do. And I love it, but you girls are doing it because you just want to play and you want to grow the game and you know, everyone has their own motivation, but like you just love the game. And Mm -hmm. it's so true. The others outside of the Olympians and the national team girls, like you guys bring the, like the breath of fresh air always, you know, we're sometimes as national team athletes, we take ourselves a little bit too seriously too at times. And, (laughs) you know, it's, it's good to kind of have the balance of let's just have fun today. Let's go out there, smile and we can work hard and also have fun. But it, it's definitely true. Like, I, I feel like that was kind of the year I needed in order to really enjoy the hockey I've played the last four years. Because I feel like kind of leading up to the 2018 Olympics, it was like I was holding on for dear life, just trying to attain mm. that goal and get go to the Olympics, get that label, Olympian. No, no, no. Like, it's so silly now when I'm thinking about it because Emirates, the Olympic gold medalist, is no different than Emirates, the hockey player that didn't have a gold medal, you know, like there's absolutely no difference, but it's just in our world. Like, like you said, it's kind of like, here's the status and you want to get that status. And it's so silly. Like it's all the moments in between that really matter. It's Mm -hmm. not about, you know, that tangible gold medal. Like it is obviously that's a great bonus and having those experiences, but the most fun is in the locker rooms and and, you know, hanging out with the girls and partying, Noxie, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> you and know have, me. You know, yeah, <laughs> of course, the moments on the ice. But, um, yeah, it really opened my eyes for sure. Well, and I think, like, it gets, it's very modest and humble of you to, like, kind of describe your success like that. I think, like, when I see you girls with your Olympic gold medal, like, I just think that's such a cool, um, like, hard piece of hardware to like really like personify exactly what you're saying all the moments that led to that Mm -hmm. because yes Mm -hmm. like at the end of the day you have to win a couple hockey games and if you've been on a winning team in your life like sometimes you take that for granted how easy that can be (laughs) but at the end of the day right like it's a it's a game of chances it's a game of inches like those things sometimes go your way sometimes they don't but like I was always the player and it sounds like you're the same as like, I can remember things that happened in the locker room or things that happened on road trips. Like I don't always remember goals that I let in or like big plays in a game. Like it's kind of insignificant in some ways, which is mm-hmm. ironic because it's literally our sport. <laughs> right. Like in the moment it feels like everything, but then in the big picture, when you think back, it's, I mean, there are maybe a couple goals against I will remember, but <laughs> I will say time out. I will say Mash is like a the like greatest memory on her. So like oh gosh, she's always right, and it's that. so <laughs> annoying. So I will say that she probably does remember a little bit more than you. Uh, I do. I do. Unfortunately, remember some of those things <laughs> too much. It's oh, so annoying. Unfortunately, sometimes you know the really good things too. I remember, but yes, yeah. See, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> do you for have, suing me? Do you, yeah, way to go, Cass. <laughs> do you have any uh, game day superstitions? Because goalies are notorious for like being a little bit odd. Is there anything like mm-hmm. that you do before game, eat? Like, what are your pre-game or your game day superstitions, if you have any? Um, I feel like in college I was like really crazy. Like I it was morning to night, and I feel like a lot of us can relate to that because I don't know what it is about college teams, but it's like from the moment you wake up, you cannot miss a single thing that you're supposed to do <laughs> leading into a game. And it's because everything is available always. Honest. Like you're it's on true. campus, you know, right. everything is going to be there. You know, it's always the same. So that's why right. I was crazy. Too, so. Right. I, so yeah. I guess that leads yeah. me to my next point is like going and leaving college. It wasn't like that anymore. Cause game day, you never knew what it was going to be like. You might be flying from Calgary, arriving in Toronto and, on a delayed Run flight to driving rink. straight to the rink. So like you couldn't really have that, you know, that, I mean, those superstitions, routine, whatever you want to call it. Um, so at that point I had to really say, okay, like what is, 
what do I need to do for a game in order to feel prepared? Because it's not what about actually matters. <laughs> if I did this and comb my hair this way and did that, whatever it is, like, it's not about that. It's like, what actually makes me feel physically and mentally prepared to play? Yeah. And then having a condensed version of what should I do in case I don't have as much time to get ready. For the game. So, <laughs> so you so, were ultra prepared for yes, everything. Yes, like, yes. <laughs> just the hair combing very, bumped down the list. I, I, I don't know. That's not even, I don't know why that came up, but I'm very like, I'm very type a so it's like that's for me i like saying like this plus this equals this and to me if i have this recipe like i'll feel like i put myself in the best situation Mm -hmm. to succeed but Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like now i've kind of played with my routine a little bit i like to like the night before i like to write down kind of my game day plan and it could be a little bit different depending on kind of how i'm feeling how many games i've been playing recently kind of just a little bit of everything if there's pregame skate um and then I write that down and the next day. I don't have to think about what my routine will be. And so, yeah, I sound a little bit crazy, but it's more about just feeling <laughs> like, okay, prepared. time out, time out. Before you keep going, your, your, your game day plan, like, like how much time you'll get be? up, eat, mm-hmm. like yeah, time, like, like you have a time. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, true. Yeah, I write down everything. like Schedule. time ranges because it's sometimes. Oh, okay, that's fair. Share. See, you're, you're yeah, being flexible so. with them. So like, for oh example, God. if we played at like 7 p.m., it'd be like, wake up, eat like breakfast, uh, probably go to the rink pregame skate. I love to pregame skate um, and then come back. I like to have a pregame nap. Uh, I'll mm. usually watch a little Netflix before <laughs> to kind of, you know, ease the brain <laughs> so I can nap. And then um, I like to do like mobility and like affirmations and kind of pump myself up and then like pregame meal get ready like i have it all kind of laid out just oh i to go get coffee that's always one so <laughs> it's, it's an important so part there's things i'd yes. like to like hit on my day but like if it's like the other weekend we played at 11 a.m like i'm not going to be able to do all that before game yeah. day like that's sh- or game time that's impossible so no nap i mean the night like is a nap have the night be- yeah <laughs> no nap that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> pregame nap at 8 a.m like <laughs> i mean the night was your nap maybe we can put yeah, it like this like, exactly. okay so <laughs> I, see. I always like plan the night before so that i'm feeling like i don't have to think on game day that's awesome we hear we hear the personality traits a little yeah. bit moxie i don't yeah. know if you get it like there's, there's a planner like in there there's a you know yeah and then she yeah, remembers so everything type a i don't even I'll need to say the, it i'll send you the routine for your, your games this weekend so oh, you can God. follow along let's see <laughs> see if it works let's see if i'll yeah actually I I'm, I'm all in. Oh, can we you know do what? that actually <laughs> yes I maybe will we join. can do like a an instagram takeover oh, of like behind the scenes of pax playing out i can't even nap game day i'm too energized Nash. to okay i'll try we'll try well, nap can be like you close your relax eyes. Okay. yeah yeah relaxation like down, right. horizontal time damn if Pax has the game of her life this weekend like you, you just I have, have to do it now job. <laughs> right this is not, yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> that's awesome okay so we are getting close on time but i did want to talk about two more things mm. um the first thing we want to talk about your hat game because okay. hat game is strong. Very strong. Is this the one you dr- got made too. Designed. Oh. Sick. Oh, yes. Where was that? <laughs> so I have what a, turn- a... Sorry, Kat, go. go. No, go what, ahead. No, I was just going to ask what okay. tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got a hat made um, as a gift last year and like a dress hat. So like kind of like the fedora styled hat and i was able to pick out like the color the shape and it was custom sized to my head and then also the the leather that goes around um and then i i took like a piece because my my grandmother was a big hat lady and so i took a a piece from her one of her old hats um and put it on my hat as well so that was a pretty yeah Talk yeah. about family person here and value and right? everything I know. attached I to the fashion. The I love it. This episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she's full no, on Charlie. I, we knew you were going to cry. I love hats. And that's like what I was saying earlier. Like my, I don't have one on my head today because I got my hair done yesterday. So that's the only reason I'm not wearing a hat. <laughs> but typically I would be wearing a hat. It's either a toque, a ball cap or a dress hat. Every once in a while I'll show off the hair. <laughs> so how many dress hats would you say you have? You know what? My dress hats, mm, not as many as you'd think. I think I only have like three or four, but then oh. it's more so like, yeah, it's like about kind of 
picking the outfits to go with the hat. Mm. So the hat looks different depending on what you wear with it, right? Yeah. So accessorizing. Like that's why you might think depends how you wear it too. Exactly. You know? Can yeah, wear it back a little tilt up, Noxie, yeah, or yeah. like straight up. A little or, mysterious here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we gotta we gotta help you, Noxie. We'll, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna work well, on you. We need a lot of help here, so <laughs> you might have to call on the panel. Um, no, that's that's awesome. I love I, the game day fits. Like that's probably one of my favorite parts of the PA. Honestly, is like oh, seeing everyone so walk fun. off the bus. Well, of course, I, like I get like assigned become... the weird job. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the weird job. The girl in the bush, like taking <laughs> yeah. a picture of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone is looking for Heather. Like we're it's like, so oh, she's true. there. So like, you give a little bit of space between the one. Yeah, 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 you have to give a space. Like, let's say the person in front of you. So she goes down mm -hmm. the stairs on the bus, and then so you yeah. can step down and then be you by pretend, yourself in this bed. You pretend you don't. See oh, her, I didn't you see you here. here. <laughs> Gotta look, look cool. Away. Make sure your mouth is closed. <laughs> <laughs> Try to smile, but not be too serious or not no, be too smiley. So yeah, yeah. We're trying. Oh my God. We're still like figuring it out. I feel like the last couple seasons, like, I don't know, let's say like the last three or four. I think, about okay. like game day I fits. think. I, I was going to say, I think WNBA pushed it oh, towards yeah, us. Definitely. Yeah. The game the day fits style. that they have. Yeah. yeah. No, and, we're trying. But it's we're, so cool. Like, come on. Yeah, to like see like the individual like personalities like yeah. showing through people's like outfits and styles. Like I think that's so important because especially in our game, like we all look like robots out on the ice. Like you can't <laughs> tell who's who or what we look like or our personalities. Like in other sports, you you can kind of express yourself yeah. a little bit. And like as a goalie, you can a little bit because you're picking out your gear and you're painting your mask and you're you have that little like bit of individualized, you know, part and of we it. Don't. But I feel like that's really important, you know, to yeah, players don't really know. <laughs> it's like tongues, maybe. I don't know. Tape, tongues out, tongues color. in. That's about it. <laughs> if you lift your 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 jerseys or yeah, not, like maybe tucked in. I guess. <laughs> Who is a perfect tuck? You know, I could analyze a couple She's people actually. <laughs> yeah, and the tape on your stick, tape jobs too. Tape job, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fair. Um, yep. and, and speaking <laughs> of personality, because this is one part that I, I wanted to hit on before we wrap up, uh, you do a ton of work with hockey gives blood and we learned today that you are also a player ambassador for kids sports. So why don't you talk just quickly about those two organizations, uh, why they're important to you and kind of talk a little bit about your involvement. Yeah. So I guess first off, I am one of the directors for hockey gives blood and I originally was actually a, a PA. So a player ambassador for hockey gives blood, but I was the first female hockey player. And then they wanted to kind of grow the female side of it. So they asked me to come on board as a director. So that's kind of my role is to kind of recruit uh, women hockey players that want to be PAs. And then also just kind of be like the in-between um, kind of like relaying messages and helping with initiatives and that. Um, but essentially it's just getting players to get on board to use their platforms. Um, and, you know, obviously hockey players have a pretty good following. So using their platforms to raise awareness around the demand for blood, plasma, stem cells. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what hockey gives blood. And then I also recently joined as a player ambassador for kids sport um, and kids sport is a non-for-profit that um, will take, uh, sorry, it's a non-for-profit that uh, kind of gives young athletes opportunity to play hockey and they pay for um, registration fees and also equipment. So there's actually a program, it's the hockey assist program and you can apply for it, especially families who, um, you know, don't have the abilities financially to, to be able to put their kids into hockey, but you can apply and um, there's these grants that go out um, in order to help these families get their kids into hockey and in sports. So um, really obviously cool. I think that's super important because I grew up and I was, um, you know, very privileged to be able to play hockey. And I maybe didn't know that growing up, but I do know now how expensive mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, growing up and playing in a, uh, playing hockey in a family with five kids that play. And so I was very Seriously. fortunate, but, and hockey's brought so much, um, you know, into my life and so many opportunities and brought me, had me learn so many values and all that, you know, there's just so much that we get out of sports. So, um, if I can kind of get back and raise awareness, that's super important for me. I love it. That's awesome. Fits you very much, Emirates. Yeah. <laughs> Too great charity. <laughs> <laughs> and we do it's have okay. one more little cool little tidbit of your involvement in something outside hockey. And I want Cax to show that. 
There we go. Who's that? Look at this. Who's Who that? Is that? Wow, she's not wearing starting a, she's a not modeling wearing a hat career. Again. <laughs> New tattoo too, eh? We gotta put it there. Oh, it looks Ella. nice. But you're involved with the. Is is this a Paris jeweler? Is this in Alberta too, or near your? Or it's everywhere. Sorry, I thought it was maybe um, local. Paris jewelers. It's primarily in Western Canada, but I believe there's yeah, some Canada. out on Eastern Canada as well. But yeah, primarily That's Western nice. Canada. The head office is in Edmonton, and it's actually a female-owned company, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. See? Well, Christmas is around the corner. Yes, and people. Everyone's always looking for jewelry. So yeah. Paris <laughs> check jewelers. Mash's profile. She's jewelers, got a couple. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Shut an up. ad read. I love it. I know, right? They're gonna love it. <laughs> uh, well, Mash, this thank you good. so much for coming on today and sharing so much about your journey in hockey. Like it's it's really been enlightening, and I think that our viewers and listeners will really uh, appreciate kind of your openness and the ups and downs of this crazy career. Mm -hmm. Um, And it only gets better because you can catch MASH this weekend at the All-Star Tournament and (laughs) on the Secret Dream Gap Tour on Friday and Saturday. Uh, And in the skills competition at the Safe Safe Streak, I think it's what what it's called. So I think it's going to be like a shootout for the players, like a... And then the goalies will stay in for as many saves in a row that they can get, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the exact rules, but that's what it sounds like. So hopefully I'll be in there for a while. <laughs> Basically, all players that plays in the 3v3 have to do or take a breakaway or a couple of them anyways. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you guys I love have that to... this is our goalie competition. Like, oh, you guys are just going to get like breakaway after breakaway well, from what do you the want tightest to do? players like... in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we should do like, a well, handling look. one. Hey, like, okay, yeah. I was going to say, Nothing would you want to do that? Pucks. Yeah, yeah, we want we want accuracy passing. We yeah. want like, fastest skater. Post, we should have done that. <laughs> fastest, fastest goalie. goalie. Would be very entertaining. Oh, that, that would be cool. Awesome. Highly entertaining. You guys should demo. Well, maybe we could promote we that to Jama. <laughs> as long we as we should can demo. Get score, I, want to- <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh my god, my gosh. gosh. Well, we could have kept awesome. going forever. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Mash. Uh, again, you can catch all the action and information that you need at pwhpa.com. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for coming on, Mash, and good luck this weekend. Thank, thank you, you everyone. This is great. Thank you. The Noxy and Cax Show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA and presented by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow Noxy and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMRD. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out SDPN.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. Free stars!